Hi, I'm DJ Schurz. I'm Professor E, and this is JD. And this is the robot program. In today's episode, we're going to teach you how to get started with your JD robot. I can't do that. That's pretty good. Why don't we head back to the studio to learn more? show you how to calibrate your servos, connect to JD, and then make him come alive. That's all right. And we're going to do that by getting your JD and your laptop. So first thing you want to make sure is that you have your robot nicely, freshly charged. So we're going to disconnect the charger from JD. You want to take that? Nice. Okay. So we're going to want to load up the Easy Builder software. And we don't need to go inside of Easy Robot School. We'll push the skip button. And now we're going to click on Example Projects. And we're going to select our JD robot. Of course, we've already put him together, if you watch one of the previous episodes. So we're going to say no, we don't want to see how to put him together. OK, now it's going to say, do you want to create a servo profile? Yes, we actually do. So. A servo profile, what is that? Well, every servo that comes out of the factory may not be aligned perfectly straight, like I'm showing here in the image, where the servos are lined up like this at 90 degrees. So when you tell the robot to move into a position of 90 degrees, they might not be lined up. So a servo profile allows you to be able to make a offset that tells the computer how many degrees that servo may need to be adjusted. So we're going to click the Create Servo Profile button. And we're going to turn our robot on. And it boots up. Now we are going to connect to the robots over Wi-Fi network. So we're going to click on our Wi-Fi network here. And we're going to locate the, there it is, EZB V4 JD. Now it's always going to start with EZB V4. It might say EZB V4 with a bunch of numbers. That is okay as well. And we're going to click the connect button. Okay. So now you have this big connect to EZB software. We're going to push that button. And watch out because the robot's going to jump into, into I'm its ready. initialization position. You ready? Whoa! Oh, there we go. So we call this the uh, you know the cross pose I guess we can call it. So this is the position that JD's moved into, and this is his alignment position. Now every servo is set for 90 degrees, okay. And now 90 degrees should be perfectly flat like this. And as you can see, this one is clearly not perfectly flat, so it needs to be adjusted. We're going to look at the screen here, and we're going to start by adjusting this servo here. And if we look at the screen, that's going to be this one here. So let's, we want this black, this plastic white piece to line up perfectly with this black piece here. So we're so starting we're, with the servo closest to the body. If we're starting with his grippers, then we can't guarantee it's going to line up when we get up to his body. That's right. And now we see we line that up perfectly. It took a four degree offset. Now we're going to move this next one. We're going to keep pushing the minus button or plus button, whatever is necessary. There we go. So now those are lined up and that one took uh, it looks like a minus nine degree offset. And now we're going to do his shoulder. You can see here his shoulder is not flush with the outside edge here. So we're going to move that one to make it flush. And that took a six degree offset. Now we're going to go to the other side and we're going to do the same thing. So we'll do the first bracket here. There we go. And now we'll do the next bracket. And that looks good as well. And then now we will do his shoulder. That looks nice and flush as well. Okay. Now his head looks pretty good. I don't think it needs any adjustment at all. No, it looks pretty good. But his legs, however. His legs, yeah. His legs. Okay, so let's start with this leg here. We're going to want to line that piece up. That looks perfect. And now we're going to want to line the bottom one up. There we go. And then finally, we want his foot to be lined up. And it looks like it pretty well is. Let's do his other foot first before we get to, or his leg first before we get to his other foot. We're going to line that bracket up there. That 
looks good. And now the next one here. That looks good. And it looks like his feet are pretty well lined up, but we can try just moving it a little bit just to get it perfect. So now we'll stand him up. There we go. So you don't hear him make any grinding noises. He seems to be standing pretty happily. Good, should we take a look at his grippers? Yeah, I guess his grippers, you can see here, they're not too closed, but I think that's good. It doesn't, they don't need to be very closed. The grippers don't need alignment very often. So that's, if we wanted to adjust them, of course, we would be able to, but there's no need to do that at this point. Okay, so now in the software, we want to save this servo profile so we can reload it again and not have to do this process anymore. So we're gonna click the save button. And of course, we're gonna give it a name. So this is JD, so let's call it JD Robot. And we'll click the save button. There we go. Now we can close this window down because it's not necessary anymore. And now we're all ready for next time. That's right. And as you can see, we've connected to the robot. And we can see our camera guy, Andreas, wave. Here's Emily. And of course, this guy. So now we want to make the robot do something. So let's get him, <laughs> let's get JD to do something fun. So if everything is hooked up right and all the servers are hooked up right, we should be able to make him wave and your JD should wave the same way as this JD waves. So don't be too alarmed with all the, the controls you see on the screen because what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you just to get how to get him to start doing some motions first. In a future episodes, we'll tell you what all these different things do. So let's locate the auto position control here and scroll down until you see the word wave. Select it, now press the execute button. So if your JD waves the same way this JD waves, then you're golden. So he's waving his left arm. So make sure that your JD is waving his left arm. That's right. And if he isn't, of course, revisit one of the other ro uh, robot program episodes and you might want to have to start building him from scratch again. But hey, it's fun, right? So let's get him to do some other fun stuff. Okay. Okay. So we have a bunch of things that people have made that this JD does. Okay. One of those things, which I'm really excited to show people all the time, is called Fly. It's pretty cool. Okay. So we're going to scroll our cursor down here to where it says Soundboard V4. And we're going to look for the words, I believe I can fly. And we're going to push the play button on there. Are you ready? Okay. Okay. I believe I can fly. I believe I can the sky. <laughs> Isn't that great? That's great. So we didn't even have to do any programming for that one. That's right. That was actually a program that was made by a grade five class from Texas. Wow. And we, of course, have incorporated it into the default program here of, of that for JD. Now let's go do some other stuff as well. For example, in the beginning of the episode, we showed what? A headstand. Headstand. Okay. Yeah. So let's scroll up here and find headstand in our list. We'll select that. Make sure that he's not going not gonna to fall off the table. And of course, we're going to push the execute button. And he does a headstand. It's pretty impressive. That's right. Okay. Other things JD can do right out of the box? Well, we can make him walk. Uh, we can click here in the black little box here where it says auto position. And we can start controlling him with the arrow keys of the keyboard. So I can push forward, make him walk forward. I could push backwards, make him walk backwards. Of course, I can also make him turn to the left or turn to the right. And then I have a lot of other actions that you can play with. So take some time to explore the different actions inside of the auto position control and get JD to do different stuff. So before we leave, we're going to get JD to do a dance, but I do want to tell you that you should disconnect from JD when you're done playing with him. Make sure you turn him off with the power switch and put him back on his charger so he's freshly charged the next time you go to use your JD robot. So let's get JD to do a little dance here and this is a fun one you can do at home as well. I want you to scroll down to where it says play next to you haunt me and we'll push that button and then JD is going to start doing his little dance. And of course we have 3D printers here at Easy Robot, so we made him a little microphone so he can actually do a little bit of a song singing for his dance. Just for you guys, a little bit of a performance. That's right. We 
You want your microphone, buddy? Here it is. Let's review what we learned in today's episode. We showed you how to connect your JD robot. The first thing you're going to do is turn him on using the power button at the back. You'll then see a Wi-Fi connection appear on your computer. After you've connected to JD, you can set his servo profile. We use this profile to fine tune any tiny inaccuracies that might have occurred during the hardware engineering process. The more accurate we can make the hardware, the easier it will be for our program to do what we expect it to do. Once JD is ready to go, you can try out some of the pre-built actions found in the software. Some of these actions were actually designed by other members of the Easy Robot community, and you could have yours included. Other things we learned to do were use the auto positioner to control JD's movement. Remember when you're disconnecting JD to first disconnect the Wi-Fi and then make sure you turn him off and plug him in so that you'll have a full charge for next time. We can do lots of cool things with JD, even make him sing into his own microphone. Thanks for watching this episode and we'll see you next time. What is a servo profile? What letters are always at the start of the Wi-Fi connection name? What is the name of the control panel used to execute pre-built commands? Find the answers at therobotprogram.com.